I caught my wife with AP in our bed, and I kicked him out of my house. Oh boy, this is long. Listen up, guys, I'm a 44-year-old dude, and my soon-to-be ex-wife, who's 39, and I were once the heavyweight champs of marriage tipping the scales together. But here's where it gets wild. Two years ago, I got a blood test that dropped a bombshell. I was on the fast track to diabetes, gout, and hypertension. Can you believe it? We were living on the edge. So, guess what? We embarked on this epic journey to transform our lives. I shed a jaw-dropping 32 kilos, going from 117 to 85 kilograms, while my wife, let's call her Jane, went from 83 to a jaw-dropping 65 kilograms. We became the ultimate power couple of fitness, defying the odds. And guess what? I dodged those deadly diseases like a ninja. It's a jaw-dropping tale of survival against all odds. We attended to a gym almost daily in the afternoon, where AP worked as a coach. Let's call him Baldy. When my wife started getting in shape, I noticed most guys turned to see her. I felt so proud of her. She's fairly busty, and she has magnificent legs. Of course, Baldy wasn't the exception. I noticed Baldy likes to check women's butt. I've seen him doing it several times, and he likes to show off how ripped he is. When Jane and I were regulars at the gym, I noticed she was enjoying the attention she got from men. Once, we were using the elliptical machines. In front of them, there is a cable machine. Baldy took off his t-shirt and started doing crossovers. I turned to Jane with my face of, can you believe this guy? But she was staring at him and she wet her lips. I saw Baldy and I swear he was grinning. I felt crushed. I mean, I was getting in shape, but I'm not as muscular and fit as he is. When we were driving home, I made a comment about Baldy showing off and Jane said, really? I didn't notice. I told her, you were staring. She said, I don't remember. I must have been thinking about something else. I shrugged it and kept driving, but from there on I noticed they were talking more frequently at the gym. Some weeks later, Jane was doing squats using the Smith machine. Suddenly, Baldy went to help her. Isn't he nice? He was grabbing her by the waist and I got angry. She finished the first set and I got there and told him in a not nice way, I got it from here. Baldy just simmered and told me, no prob, buddy. He calls everybody buddy and walked off. Jane knows me very well, and when she heard my angry tone, she said, My God, OP! I told her, We'll discuss this at home. At home, drama blowed up. She called me immature and jealous. I told her I noticed he was trying to get into her pants. She said that she knows that, but she would never cheat on me. I said then, Why she let him touch her, and she said she didn't want to be rude. About an hour later, arguing, we agreed to change gym. So we went to another place to do exercise, but Jane was resentful at me in the following months. Her argument was that I don't trust her. On the third month after we changed gym, a very good opportunity opened up in my job, but in the afternoon. We discussed it, and I took it, and we had to attend the gym at different hours. I went in the morning and Jane in the afternoon. This is when it all went south. Jane's resentment increased and we barely speak. I send her messages telling her about my day, that I miss her, memes, but she rarely replied or just, yes, okay, same here, ha ha ha. I was very worried and proposed couple therapy. She said I was the one who needs therapy because I'm the one with trust issues. I agreed. I was so desperate to fix our marriage that I even thought it was all my fault. So the following year, 2022, I went to therapy, but Jane's behavior didn't change. We weren't intimate anymore. She never was in the mood. I snooped to her phone, but didn't find anything out of the ordinary. I looked into her car for a second phone. Nothing. I checked her phone again to see her map history. It only showed me housework house gym house. Whenever I tried to talk to her, she just said she feels that she's having a 40s phase. It'll pass. I never had any evidence of cheating, so I continued working and worrying. We live in a condo. The security guard, a very cheerful man called Mr. P, greeted me. We chat a lot. He was touching his shoulder and told me yesterday he had to move a heavy sofa, and he has some pain today. I was sympathetic, and he dropped the bomb. Maybe you can arrange a meeting with your massagist. I told him, who? He said, the guy who came yesterday to massage Mrs. Jane. It took me a second to process this. I told him, do you have a video of him? I think he noticed I was pale and hurried to show me. Guess who? Baldy, of course, he has come a few times to massage my wife. I took the day off and started investigating. I asked a coworker for his car and in the afternoon I followed Jane. She parked her car at the mall where the gym is and there is Baldy waiting for her. They giggle and behave like a couple. Kisses, hugs, and I feel nearly to tear. They walk a couple of blocks and go into a residential area. I tried to follow them with my phone ready to record, but the guard stopped me and asked, can I help you? I just said, what a nice couple. Do you know them? He said he thinks they're newlyweds, but can't tell me anything else. I called Jane, but never answered. I went to her car in the mall and wondered why that place doesn't show on the map. I dial again and I can hear her phone inside her car. That's why. 
I also found out Jane hasn't attended the gym in eight months. I didn't know that the previous night was the last day I slept with Jane in the same bed. I returned the car and went home and called my parents. Fortunately, my dad answered and I told him everything. I was crying and he comforted me and told me to get evidence. Obviously, my marriage is over and I need all I can gather while he'll contact one of his friends who is an excellent divorce lawyer. Jane called me when saw the two missing calls. I just told her I was already at home and she told me, I'm on my way from the gym, my butt is killing me. Yeah, I can guess. When she saw me, she asked, what happened? Why did you cry? I don't know how, but I was mentally focused. I smiled and told her I got the flu, that's why I left work early. Don't come near me. It might be the bug I'll be tested tomorrow. I'll sleep in the spare room. She agreed. I cried silently and didn't sleep a wink. Nearly midnight, I heard her giggling. I guess she's messaging Baldy, but I didn't find any evidence of contacting another man. Then it hit me. Why didn't I see it earlier? I bet AP is disguised as one of her female co-workers. In the morning while Jane was in the shower, I took her phone and created a session in my laptop and put her phone back in the same place. We both can unlock our phones. The Sessison works while the phone is close to my laptop or in the same Wi-Fi account. Then I saw it. Under a female name, the profile picture was a dumbbell. I entered and most of the conversations were deleted. I guess they use work words as code in case I snooped. Can you deliver the papers in my desk? I know she doesn't have a desk at work. Going to the meeting, where are you? On the top of them, boss is in his office. He's clueless. Pretty clever. I guess I am boss because I know her boss is a woman. Jane got out of the shower and saw me. You look worse. Why don't stay with your parents? I denied the idea thinking of getting evidence. After Jane went out, I contacted my dad and gave me the name and number of the lawyer. I called him and explained everything. He told me the captions I took from my laptop are useless. They don't have any factual evidence, since is not AP's name. And she was smart enough to leave pieces of conversation that looks pretty innocent. I can take pictures of them at the mall, but she can argue they are just good fellas, and I can't invade into the residential area without permission because it might get me into more trouble. At work, I was in zombie mode, thinking how to get evidence. I might install secret cameras in my house, but Baldy rarely goes to my home, and Jane might find them. Unless... I'm out of the picture. I texted Jane and told her I'm positive of the bug, and I'll stay at my parents' because I might need help. She liked the idea and told me she would miss me, but she'll call me every day. When I hung up, I called my dad and my brother. When I got home, she had already packed a suitcase for me. She was so eager of getting rid of me. I told her I'll take my laptop, and then I checked her messages. Boss will be out of the office, want to come to my desk? She sent this message almost after I told her I was positive to the bug. Good, she bit. We didn't have dinner, no kisses, no hugs. I noticed her watching her watch twice. From the door, I told her, I'll miss you. I was expecting her to shut the door on my face, but she walked me to my car, and I was gone. My dad and brother were outside the building waiting for Baldy to appear, but he didn't show up. After half an hour, I thought, why did she walk me to my car? Of course, because Baldy was already inside the building waiting perhaps inside her car. It would be very suspicious if her massagist came at this hour. I came back, hurried to my house, and entered silently. I heard music coming from the bedroom and the moaning. Next to the door there is a sofa, his and her clothes were on it. I put my phone to record and opened the bedroom door and there she was, my wife, the love of my life for eleven years in all four, and Baldy behind her. I got a very good seconds of both of their faces when they saw me open the door. Jane screamed and cover herself with the blanket. Baldy went alpha male immediately walking naked towards me. I took a shot of him doing raw, my wife. He yelled aggressively at me. Why don't go for a walk, buddy? I hit his troth with my hand opened. I saw this movement in the Mel Gibson movie, Ransom. The next second, Baldy was coughing and gasping, kneeling on the floor. I yelled, get out of my house, and kicked him out. I threw his clothes at him when my dad, brother, and Mr. P were arriving to my house. I told them, I'll take it from here, and closed the door. Jane was still on the bed covering herself. She was trembling. I told her, I have never hurt you, nor will I. Get dressed, I'll wait for you in the living room. While I was waiting, I sent the video to my lawyer, and he answered, I'm sorry for you, but jackpot. A few minutes later, Jane showed up. She couldn't see me in the eyes. I started recording the conversation. I asked why. She didn't answer. Was I such an awful husband to you? She started crying, but didn't answer. Do you love him? She shaked her head, but no words. I stood up and hit the table. Say something, Jane. Damn it! She opened her eyes wide and started trembling again like a puppy when is scared. I have never yelled at her before. 
I sat and talked calmly. My lawyer will contact you for the divorce. Get a lawyer, she finally spoke. We can fix this. Fix what? Our marriage was over since Baldy was on the picture, and you choose him over me. It was a mistake. No, it wasn't. It was a choice. You chose, and this is the consequence. What did you think would happen when I find out? Silence again. Go to your sister's and tell her the truth, or I will show her the video. She went to the bedroom and started packing. I followed her and watched. Since two days ago, I was trying to convince myself my wife is long gone. The person who I shared my house with is not my wife. But seeing her, putting her clothes inside the suitcase neatly, with her gracious movements and those little things I love of her, hit me hard. I went to the spare room and started ugly crying. I heard when she closed the main door. She picked her clothes that were on the sofa. She made the bed where I caught them and I dropped on the floor. So much later, I called my dad. He told me Baldy wanted to press charges, but Mr. P told him he didn't sign in, so he's trespassing. The condo can sue him. He dropped it and went out. My nosy brother pressed his ear on the door, and my dad took him from the other ear to his car. I was exhausted. The previous days I didn't sleep well, so I almost passed out on the spare room. Next morning my phone had a lot of Jane's messages apologizing and asking for a second chance. I just blocked her. My sill called me. Apparently Jane hasn't told her what happened, just that we're fighting. I guess it's good my file is not alive to see Jane's behavior. She was the youngest and his favorite. Emil has senile dementia. All this happened a week ago. Next week, Jane is going to be served. Update. Hi, everybody. I'm back with a juicy update. You'll enjoy this as much as I do. I'd like to cover some points before I start the update. First, I want to thank everybody who contacted me and gave me advice, congratulate me, or just to let me know they care. I've read from other posts that the support you get is mind-blowing, but it's the first time I experience so much care from strangers from the bottom of my heart. Thank you. Second, as you can guess, English is my second language, so I messed up in some sentences and confused prepositions. Sorry about that. Also, I wrongly said, Jane was doing sit-ups. She was doing squats third. To those who think my story is fake, you are entitled to think whatever you want. I just hope my testimony helps someone in the future as much as others have helped me. Fourth, about how I hit AP. It was not a fancy ninja punch, just a chop in the throat that, frankly, it was lucky I reacted before Baldy did. I won't lie, seeing him on the floor coughing felt great. Fifth, some of the readers found a post I made in Ask and Ask Reddit a month before D-Day. It never got it posted because I didn't understand the rules of the community, and today it isn't important anymore. A quick summarize, Jane and I were trying to be parents, or 10 years. On the eighth year, we saved enough money to buy three opportunities in the most expensive and successful reproduction clinic here in my country. All three failed. Jane started her affair during the third one. That's the clinic where my blood was tested and adding the history of diseases from my family. They gave me the probabilities of developing diabetes, gout, hypertension, and having strokes. I should thank them. Someone mentioned that Jane intentionally aborted in the third shot because it might be AP's baby. Well, that's not possible because for her, it's almost impossible to conceive naturally. The embryos were fecunded in vitro and then implanted directly in her womb. I tried to repost my question, but she came and told me, I don't want to have kids anymore, so I dropped it. I'm sure Baldy doesn't have anything to do with her decision. This is important for later. Let's continue with the update. It's been 12 days since D-Day. What have I been doing from there? D-Day plus one, Fry. I had a nice chat with Mr. P. He confessed he faked his shoulder pain. He just wanted to warn me about Baldy. Also, he told me a very nosy neighbor saw when I kicked Baldy naked from my apartment. Surely in a week, all condo will know my situation. My brother came to help me change the lock of the door. When he left, I felt so alone and cried a lot. I called my job to ask for a day off. At night, I spoke to my lawyer. He said he's making the divorce papers. He couldn't start until he had the evidence. So my divorce will be divorce by mutual consent. That's smoother than uncaused divorce. That's longer and pretty nasty. Also, he told me not to share the video. Jane will be served in two weeks. Sill called me, but I told her to AKS Jane why we're divorcing. D-Day plus two. Sat. Seal came, and I showed her the video I drove her home and saw Jane's car. When I got home, I still felt crushed and cried some more. D-Day plus three. Son. I visited my parents. My mom cried with me. She really loved Jane. My dad had a chat with me about my money, properties, and stuff. When I returned home, Mr. P told me Jane and Baldy showed up. I guess they are going to make public their relationship now that the cat is out of the bag. But strangely, they came at different times. Jane came in the morning. She parked her car and saw mine wasn't there. Tried to enter my house, but her key doesn't work anymore. Then she asked Mr. P if he knew where I went. He didn't know. 
and told her Mr. OP gave me this for you, my attorney's card. She kept it and left. Baldy came in the afternoon and first asked to see Jane. Mr. P told him, Mrs. Jane, emphasis on Mrs., doesn't live here anymore, then asked to see me, and Mr. P told him, Mr. OP is away, no idea when he'll return, and he left. I guess they both are not in contact yet. I wanted to ask about Jane. Is she sad? Did she look healthy? Did she ask about my well-being? But then I remembered D-Day and just thanked and say goodnight to Mr. P. When I got home, I cried a lot again. D-Day plus four. Mon. I didn't want to, but something I learned from all you champions is to hit hard the gym. So I looked for a new gym near my job and had a good session. I felt pretty good. Then I returned to work. At home, I didn't cry this time and start taking out all Jane's pictures. D-Day plus five. Two. Had a meeting with my lawyer to review my assets. Fortunately, my dad made Jane sign a prenup so she can't touch anything I had before we got married. My house mainly. All remaining stuff gets divided 50. 50. And I can get a compensation for her adultery. As compensation, I'm going to take out alimony. I can fight for all the stuff, but everything reminds me of her. And I want to start anew. When I left home, I heard whispers. I turned my head and saw two neighbors that immediately pretended they didn't see me. They walked in front of me and geeted me. I knew this would happen. Eight or that, I went to the gym and work. This repeats all week, so I'm going to omit. D-Day plus six. Wed. Nothing interesting. I only have FB as social media. I ignore all DM asking me to contact Jane. I closed it and opened Reddit and had a nice time reading about all you champions that overcome what I have been experiencing. I felt better, so I thought of sharing my own experience. D-Day plus seven. The. I started writing. I posted it before going to the gym. When I was at work, it amazed me how many people were reacting to my story. I answered some comments D-Day plus 8, Fry. I was reading comments and answering all morning. I was smiling. Feels good to be appreciated. Two comments stuck in my mind that I didn't think about. One, report AP to my old gym and two, my home is tainted. I need a fresh start. So before I went to the gym, I looked for real estate agents to sell or rent my house. I'm not comfortable here anymore. I haven't entered to my bedroom since D-Day I've been sleeping in the spare room. I don't want to live like this. D-Day plus nine, S-At. Since Jane would come and bother me, I decided to spend the day outside. She did come, then she visited my parents and brother. They just texted me, Jane came. I answered, thank you, I don't want to talk about her yet. D-Day plus 10, Son. I spend the day with my parents. We visited a town two hours from the city and had a blast. I don't know if Jane came. My dad told me not to sell my house, but to rent it. I agree and went home. When I got home, Mr. P told me Baldy came in the afternoon and alone again. He asked for me, but Mr. P told him I'm away. He left without a word. D-Day plus 11, Mon. Yesterday, Monday morning, I went to my old gym. I was not sure if I'd meet Baldy. He worked in the afternoon, but he was screwing my wife in the afternoon, so I thought he's changed his shift. He was nowhere. I asked to talk to Frank, the gym owner. While I was waiting for him, I met an old janitor I used to chat with. He told me to say hi to Miss Jane. I guess my new normal is to tell everybody we split up. I smiled at him. Frank finally received me. I asked about Baldy. He told me Monday is his day off. He asked for more hours, and now he works from Tuesday to Sunday in the morning. Then I explained the reason of my visit. He listened carefully until I finished and finally showed him the video. He stayed silent and thinking. He said, you're not going to like this. I just thought, what now? Frank called the receptionist to bring Harry, another coach and Baldy's friend. He has a big beard. Frank asked him to tell me about Baldy's girlfriend. Fasten your seatbelts, this is good. According to Harry, Baldy is heads over heels for Jane and Frank confirmed it. He told me Baldy had many complaints, especially from female members, but for the last months he has changed. No complaints and he's very professional to all members. And Harry told me something that made my jaw drop. Baldy is trying to marry Jane by baby trapping her. I was processing this information when I felt something starting from my chest. It climbed up my throat and finally blowed up in my mouth. I laughed. I swear I was joker madly laughing. I even teared a bit. Frank and Harry were very confused. I thought, oh sweet karma, thank you. After I calmed, but with a big grin on my face, Harry asked what was going on, and Frank explained, this is Baldy's girlfriend's husband. Harry made a shocked face. Oh man, this is bad. This is really messed up. Harry left. Next, we discussed about firing Baldy, Frank said he has to report the situation to the coach association, not real name. And he surely has to fire him because Jane was a gym member, or Frank's gym could have legal repercussions. About his license as coach. 
I need to make a legal document explaining Baldy is the reason of my divorce, the key number of my divorce case, and the video. My attorney will give the video to the coach association's attorney. I can't share it. Baldy will lose his license from that association, but he can go to another association and apply for another license. It'd take months, though. I asked if Baldy can appeal. Frank said he might, but it would be a waste of energy. The association does not tolerate such conduct. Also, he doesn't have the money to pay for somebody who represents him. That reminded me of the residential area where he entered with Jane. I thought Baldy was wealthy. Frank brought his face closer to me. What residential area? I showed on the Maps app. You tailed them to this place? I did, on D-Day, minus one inch. Frank got angry. That's where my late father's house is. After Frank's father passed away, he inherited the house. All the equipment that's obsolete or needs repair goes to that house. He lent Baldy the key to go and keep some stuff occasionally, but he does not have permission to stay there. He surely has a copy of the key, and he might be living there illegally. He's going to investigate this further. I'll be easy, since there are tons of cameras in that place. I was leaving the gym when I heard Mr. O.P., Mr. O.P., wait! It was Harry. He told me he was sorry about what's happening. Baldy never told him who was his girlfriend. He just said that he met her at XXX Mall. I thanked him and took a step towards the exit. He rushed. Can you tell me what happened? I told him pretty much what you heard. He was screwing my wife and now I'm divorcing her. Another step. What will happen to Baldy? That depends on Frank and the coach association. I tried to take another step. But how are you handling it? Okay, now this is strange. I stared at Harry and remembered Baldy went to my house twice. I said, you called Baldy and he's on his way here, right? You are just buying time. Am I wrong? He made a guilty face. Please, Mr. O.P., talk to him. He's really desperate. He was crying yesterday. His girl, I mean your wife, isn't returning his calls. Tell me, why should I care if he's rotting in hell? I'll be here with you so you don't be scared. I laughed. Scared? Of that weakling? He didn't told you I kicked him out of my house naked, right? Harry didn't believe me. Fine, let's see what he wants. I saw there are cameras where we were talking and sat in front of a table in the reception. I don't think Baldy is stupid enough to attack me, but who knows? Besides, I'm really curious about what he wants. He came running 10 minutes later and saw me waiting for him. He extended his hand. I crossed my arms and left him with the hand hanging. What the hell you want? I looked angrily directly to his eyes. He sat in front of me. Listen, buddy. Stop right there. We're not buddies. Mr. S., the janitor, is my buddy. You are not. He seemed apologetic. Okay, my bad. I want to say I'm sorry for everything. I never wanted to hurt you, and I really care about Jane. Well, you just said three lies to my face. You are not sorry, you did mean to destroy my life, and you just care about yourself. He changed from apologetic to annoyed. Okay, whatever, man. Just tell me where Jane is. Last time I saw her was when I kicked her cheating ass out of my house after I kicked you out naked. I know Harry was listening. Baldy's face changed color to red. That was a cheap shot. I should sue you. As far as I know, you entered my home illegally, and perhaps you were raping my wife. I have videos of you getting out, but you didn't sign in. He changed again. Okay, okay, I'm sorry. Tell me what you want from me. Please tell Jane I need to speak to her. In that moment, Frank came in a rush. I guess he saw through the cameras that Baldy showed up. Everything okay here? Everything is fine, Frank. I was just telling this sissy what I want. I stand up and talk close to Baldy's face. What I want is what is coming for you, what you deserve, what the law has prepared for you. I want to crush your dreams just like you did with mine. You want kids? Guess what? You won't and you will never have. Baldy said, What's that supposed to? But Frank asked him to see him in his office. Harry looked impressed. He grabbed Baldy's arm and pulled him. Dude, you're in deep shit. I finally left. D-Day plus 12. Two. I feel I am ready to face Jane now. I'm till grinning while I type this. So, how have you been? TLDR. I caught my wife with our gym coach in our bed, and I know when and how it started. Update 2. Hi again. I didn't expect to update so soon, but something important has happened. I'd like to share something that my therapist told me. Do you remember I started therapy because Jane suggested I'm having trust issues? Turns out I don't have any. I'm one step to become a very gullible person. But the therapist noticed I have a lot of insecurities due to my obesity. Since I remember, I was the chubby, nerdy guy at school. Never boyfriend, always best friend. I had my first girlfriend at 18, and she dumped me a week later for a better-looking guy. I went to an engineering high school, so ladies were few. My next relationship was at my 20s, with a very toxic girl who blamed me for everything, even for the rain. She really did a job on me making me feel guilty for anything that pops in her mind. Later I started working because my family had money problems and I didn't have another relationship until I met Jane at university. The previous session to the last one with my therapist, 
We discussed my feelings about not having kids. She has helped me to get my priorities in order. Number one, me and everything that covers myself like physical, health, gym, and eating well. Intelligence, studying, learning, mental challenges, and soul, beliefs, moral ethics. Number two, people who lives with me, Jane. Number three, family and friends. Number four, work. Number five, leisure and entertainment. Last session was about Jane. The therapist asked about my plans. I told her I will divorce Jane. She told me it is normal I'm in such distress because my priority too is crumbling. I will have to pass for similar stages of grieving death. Denial, anger, bargaining, depression, and acceptance. I had to Google them because I forgot them. I am in the bargaining stage because I'm thinking a lot of what ifs, e.g. What if she really is remorseful? What if we're the golden couple who will survive an infidelity? But the reality is that I will never trust her ever again. It will kill me knowing she's at home alone doing God knows what when I'm at work. Torture for me. Depression is a dangerous stage in my case because it can lead me to gain weight again. I should stick to the gym and watch closely my diet. Hope this info helps people who are grieving. Now the update, I've been very busy. I applied for a promotion at job. I could have taken it long time ago, but it demands lots of traveling. I feel it will help me heal to be away. Also, I've been looking for a new place to live, and I found one small apartment perfect for me. I've already paid three moths of rent in advance. I'll move as soon as possible. I haven't seen Jane since D-Day or Baldy since that Monday when I am sure he was fired. On the bright side, one of my neighbors, a lady in her 50s, meet me in the condo's elevator. She told me she hasn't seen Jane lately. I told her we're slipping apart. And then she happens to remember she's having a dinner and her single niece is coming for a few days and I'm invited. It took me by surprise. Looks like I'm in the market again. My attorney told me Jane was going to be served last Friday, but we had some festivities in my country, so she was served last Sunday morning at my in-law's home. The following Monday, somebody, Jane I guess, slided a letter under my door. Three sheets back and front from Jane, mainly explaining about what lead her to cheat. Here we'll introduce the second villainess in the story. A co-worker will call her flirty. I've met her sometimes at Jane's work events, like Christmas or anniversary celebrations. She's really thin, almost skinny, and usually wears a lot of makeup. Also, she thinks every man want to sleep with her. One time she told Jane I was staring at her. I did once, because I could see her ribs, and I thought she was unhealthily thin. Anyway, according to Jane's letter when she lost weight, Flirty approached her because she wanted them to be best friends since they are the two hotties at work. That's when the brainwash started. Flirty made her think she deserves a better man. She's entitled to. She told her I was a pathetic man that will try to own her now that she's hot. When the incident with the Smith machine happened, Flirty said Jane, See? See? Didn't I tell you? He wants to be your owner more than your husband. Jane bought it, and due to Flirty's manipulation, she was resentful to me for months. When we attended the gym at different times, Jane met Baldy accidentally at the mall, and he approached her. She confessed she had a crush for a guy similar to Baldy before I met her. She never told me that before. They went for a bite and they both flirted. Jane showed Flirty Baldy's picture from FB and she told her she'll be a dumb B asterisk totch if she didn't F him. Besides her pathetic husband, me, doesn't compare with that Greek god. She had the opportunity. She was eager to, so she did. Baldy took her to his house that coincidentally is close to the mall where they ran into each other, so she don't know that's Frank's dad's home. All this happened nine months ago. Flirty is a professional cheater. She told Jane how to cover her tracks, the work words code, to hide Baldi's contact and to hide her map tracking historial. She even told her that changing her phone password is stupid because I'll immediately suspect. Jane noticed Baldi hated when she talked about me, and as punishment he made hickeys on her body. Now I remember she started using pajama to sleep because it was cold. He used to trash me, but she never played along. Meanwhile, Flirty used to tell her that she's entitled to this romance and I deserve being cheated on because I'm a beta. During those months, she says she liked the feeling of danger. The thrill and the sex with Baldy was good, but it also hurt her seeing me struggle trying to be a better husband and knowing she was the reason of my pain. It was easier to ignore me and continue with the pleasure Baldy gave her. D-Day arrives. I completely blindsided her. She thought I was clueless. I'm going to write this part just like she wrote it. I was in shock, and I covered myself with the blanket by pure instinct. When I reacted, I saw you pushing and kicking Baldy out of the room and the house. When I heard you closing the door and coming back, I didn't know what to say. I have never seen you this angry before. Then you said, I have never hurt you, nor will I. That's true. In the years we've known each other, 
you have never hurt me, not even when we found out that it's my fault that we can't have children. After that, she heard me crying in the spare room. She wanted to comfort me, but how could she? In the main door, we have a mirror to check ourselves before going out. She looked at herself, but she couldn't bear the look. When she entered her car, she cried and told herself, What have I done? Baldy called her that night, but she blocked him. She arrived at Sayel's house at about midnight, two hours later after the drama. Her house is around 40 mins from mine. She was scared of telling Ciel what happened because she's older, and she has a very strong character. Next day, she told Flirty what had happened. Flirty told her she should be happy that she got rid of me. I'm going to copy this part too. J. And then what? F. Babe, you are free. You can have sex with Baldy or any guy you want, J. And then, F. I don't follow you, J. What will happen when I'm tired of having sex with a bunch of guys? F then you can decide which one date seriously, J. And then what? F I don't know. Get married, I suppose, J. But I already had a marriage. F but it was with OP. He's a loser. I bet Baldy is 100 times better than him. J. No, that's not true. He gave me a good life. F don't settle for so little. You can have a better man. Then they proceed to have a big fight in front of the co-workers. She can't recall it well, but she remembers swearing and yelling at her. Flirty told her that any guy hotter than me is better than me. I don't get what she has against me. But Jane realized what she destroyed. She was inconsolable, and her boss let her go home early. The next day is when I showed S.I.L. the video. Jane was babysitting Sile's twins. After I drove her home, S.I.L. asked Jane to help her going to do some errands, just the two of them. That was a lie. They parked at a park, and she demanded to know what was happening in her head to cheat on me. Jane cried and told her, I don't know. Syl confessed she was envious of our marriage. Eleven years and not a huge fight. We both looked happy. She couldn't believe her little sister was capable of such thing. Jane was there for Sael when her ex-husband left her for another woman. Jane asked her not to kick her out, but Sael told her she can stay after all. That house belongs to both of them, but she let her know she's very disappointed and she will side me if I ever need her help. Jane understood. Next Sunday, Jane came to apologize, but I was not home. When she received my attorney's card, she called, and my attorney confirmed I hired him. She knew I was really going to divorce her. So she went to her new home and wrote a confession and sent it to everybody we both know. I started receiving messages and phone calls the following week, but I didn't want to read or answer. Now I've read some of the DM, and it's what she said. Most of them want to comfort me. One of her cousins said it takes guts to confess, so I should give her a try. The following week, she tried to distract herself with work, but it seems everybody now knows she cheated. If you are unfaithful in my country, people see you like an easy woman. So female co-workers don't talk to her, particularly flirty, and male co-workers are annoyingly friendly to her. She asked to be relocated, but it'll take months. So she quit her job the following Friday. She has a good amount of savings. We had our finances separated, and since I was the big earner, I paid for almost everything. Next day, she was looking for me in her words to beg me take her back. She came here, but when she saw I wasn't home, she went to my parents. My dad refused to speak to her, but my mom was sympathetic and told her that she's sorry about all this. But her son, me, is really hurt and asked them not to talk about her anymore. Jane understood, but then went to my brothers. He told her, OP is not here and frankly, I don't want to talk to you and closed the door in front of her face. She came back to her new house very sad. All last week, she has been reflecting about her actions and she's been really depressed realizing how much damage she has done to our relationship, to her family and mine, and all for meaningless pleasure coming from a douchebag that, in her words, believes vaccines are just a pharmacy scam and believes in astrology. Yeah, Baldy is heavily tattooed. He has a Taurus sign on his arm. Sill suggested her to go to therapy. I don't blame her. If my brother were in the same situation, I'd be very disappointed, but I'd try to make him re what is wrong with him. She finally went to therapy, and her therapist suggested writing me this letter and come clean to me. So she says all written in the letter is true. She swears on her life if I take her back, there will be no spouse in the history of humanity more grateful, loyal, and honest than her. She suggests total access to her social media that I already had. She will always answer my calls no matter the situation and to never have friends that I don't approve. There are more things about family and friends that I don't think it's important to share. Besides, it needs a lot of context. Finally, she pleads to meet me and let her apologize properly to my face. In her words, sorry doesn't start to describe what I'm feeling right now. What do I think of this letter? The things I can confirm is that she hasn't contacted Baldy until that Monday when he was fired and she confessed to family and friends. The rest could be partially true. Also, I'm sure it's been sweetened. 
For example, she does not mention when she called me jealous and immature. She does not mention letting Baldi do her raw, and she let him finish inside. She can give me all her passwords, but she lied to my face and gaslighted me for nine months, according to her. And she was very good at it, besides I don't want to be her jailer. As I said, I will never trust her ever again. Whenever I see her face, I'll also see Baldi's nape in front of her. I will not be her second option, nor will be a doormat. I haven't replied yet, but I think I'll see her next weekend. TLDR. Jane, send me a letter. This is what she wrote and my reaction. Update 3. Hi champions, I'm back. Thank you all who contacted me. I've been silent because I needed time to reflect and I finally got it. Thank you very much. It's been some very rough days. For those who want to know, I did met Jane. No, I didn't answer her letter. It was by a dumb mistake I made. I'll explain. A few days after my last post, I had an anxiety attack due to the stress I had bottled up, according to my therapist. My life had a 180 change and my mind hadn't had time to adjust. It was my first time having this kind of episodes. I thought I was having a stroke. Tachycardia, sweating, and panic clouded my judgment. My coworkers dialed to emergency and an ambulance came for me. If I hadn't been so scared, I'd have enjoyed the ride. I was so very sure at any moment I'd croak. The paramedic repeated to me, Mr. You are having a panic attack. Everything is going to be fine. I tried to focus on his words, but I couldn't. My only thoughts were, I'm going to die. At the hospital, they sedated me, and I started to feel better and sleepy. I could answer questions. The doctor asked for my name, my age. What day was it? I could answer correctly until I passed out. When I woke up, guess who was next to me? Jane. I forgot to take out her name and number from my emergency contact. I was very confused due to the drugs. I smiled at her and said, Jane? She was sitting reading a book, and when she heard me, she jumped off her seat and approached me. She had tears in her eyes and told me, Hello, my love, you really scared us. That's when everything came back to me. I stopped smiling and asked, What are you doing here? I tried to sit, but my body felt numb and clumsy. She shushed me and told me, Take it easy, no sudden movements. I'll get the doctor. She kissed my forehead and left. I wanted to evade the kiss, but also my reflexes were numb. That kiss felt so familiar but I know it has been more than a year since she kissed me with sincere love. While she was gone, I saw around me. I was in a big room with other six beds, four of them with a patient's. They all separated by curtains to have privacy. I also noticed I wasn't wearing my clothes, but a hospital robe. A few minutes later, she came back with the doctor. I had slept for 26 hours. The doctor explained all about the anxiety attack I suffered. He asked me if I stopped taking any meds, but Jane and I answered almost at the same time, I don't. He doesn't take any meds. I hate how well she knows me. The doctor told me the episode comes from a heavy stress or a sudden change in my life, or both. I glanced at Jane, but she hid her eyes. He ordered some days off to reflect and get some therapy. I told him I'm already on therapy, but the doc said I need to see a psychiatrist. My therapist is a thanatologist psychologist, so she can't prescribe meds. He told me that I must be hungry, and the next day I'd be discharged, and he left. It was 8 p.m., so Jane had another hour until visiting hours were over and she didn't look like she wanted to leave. It felt awkward, and that feeling leads me to chatter like an idiot. So I asked, you said you scared us. Who are us? She smiled. I bet she knew I couldn't resist to talk. Your parents and me, they were here in the morning. Did they leave? Yes, they are expecting my call. I'll talk to them tomorrow. You can leave. I want to sleep. But your dinner, it's almost here. When the doctor mentioned I must be hungry, my stomach grumbled. I didn't eat a thing for 26 hours. A few minutes later, a veteran nurse came with a tray on a cart. She asked Jane to manipulate the bed so I'd be in sitting position to eat. I don't know what kind of face I made because Jane was amused and staring at me while the nurse arranged the tray in front of me on my bed. I'm an ex-glutton guy. She said, God, I love you so much. I glared at her again and asked her one more time to go home, but the nurse got really mad at me. According to her, Jane sponge bathed me and she even shaved me. I didn't notice until she told me. Finally, she asked Jane to feed me because I was still coming out of the meds. I told her we're getting divorced, but she said that's not her problem and I should be thanking her she's been here to help, and I am a very ungrateful person. Then she left. I refused her help and tried to eat even though my movements were very clumsy. I was making a mess with the soup and Jane begged me to let her help me. I felt like a spoiled brat making a tantrum. I just said fine and let her feed me. I never felt so vulnerable before. She behaved very maternalistic and affectionate. I could have a close look at her. She wasn't wearing makeup. I saw more lines of expression and also, she has crow's feet now. I felt better after I finished eating. 
She took the tray out of the room. She was in good mood. I saw a patient in front of me, a man in his 50s, checking Jane when she went out and came back. I'm not surprised. She was wearing a coat and jeans, but she's very pretty. I didn't like the feeling of being in debt with her. When she sat down, I said, thanks for being here. She looked me in the eyes and smiled any time. She tried to comb my hair and my forehead with her hand, but I could reject her this time. She looked hurt, and I didn't say anything. She tried to grab my hand, but I removed it, and she said, Can we talk, please? I remained silent. There are only two reasons for me to at least be cordial to her. The twins. They weren't baptized when they were toddlers, but after SIL's ex went away, Jane and I supported Syl and the twins. I love those two little rascals with all my heart. When we babysitted them, I told Jane this would count as parent training for when we had our owns. That will never happen. Syl asked us to be their godparents, and I teared with emotion. They are the closest thing I have to a daughter and a son. I know Jane loves them too, and I don't want any drama near my godson and goddaughter, and I miss them so much. I haven't seen them since about a week before D-Day. Also, I haven't spoken to them because I was avoiding Jane. So I told her, okay, let's talk. In the condo, I'll contact you soon. She offered to take me home the next day, when I get discharged. I told her, no, I'll ask my parents to come for me and I'll see her again in the condo. I wanted to talk to my parents. She noticed I was looking for my clothes. She opened a cabinet next to my bed and gave me my phone. I looked at her suspiciously, and she made her guilty face again, meaning I am sure she snooped my phone and she admitted it. We didn't utter a word. That's the language we developed by being married 11 years. I don't care if she snooped. I have nothing to hide. I texted my parents, and they called almost immediately. While I was talking to them, the same old nurse told Jane visiting hours were over. She wanted to say goodbye, but I ignored her. She whispered to my ear, I know you keep your word. I'll wait for you to contact me. I love you. She kissed my hair and left. I do keep my word. My father always told me, a man is worth as much as his word. I asked my parents if they knew what happened after I passed out. According to them, one of my coworkers showed up in the hospital to give information about my medical secure. That's when the staff saw the emergency contact, and they called Jane. Seal contacted them after the hospital called. When Jane came, she met my coworker, and he left. Jane was waiting for the doctor assigned to me when my parents arrived. My dad was very cordial to her and asked what she knew. After a while, waiting, a nurse called out, relatives of patient OP. They stood up, and the nurse guided them to the doctor. They've already tested my blood and told them I'm physically healthy. My anxiety attack stems from a psychological aspect. The doctor asked for Jane to see me because she's the emergency contact. She promised my parents to call them after seeing me. When she came back, she was surprised my parents were still there waiting. She gave them a ride to their home while she told them she helped the nurses to undress me and put the hospital robe on. They didn't talk about our divorce. My parents thanked her for the ride and agreed to visit in the morning, and she'd switch in the afternoon around 1 p.m. Also, I called SIL to thank her for calling my parents. Luckily, my godchildren were still up and I could speak to them. They were drawing get well soon cards for me. I promised to visit next weekend. Next day, it was Thursday I was discharged from the hospital. My parents took me to my new home. A week before my panic attack, I started moving to my new place. I took my personal belongings. Everything else will stay in the condo. I'll rent it as fully furniturished. Luckily, there are three universities nearby. I know there are students who would kill for a place like mine. I've already bought the basic furniture, a refrigerator, a stove. I have to learn to cook my meals from now on. A bed, a table with chairs and a desk, cleaning tools. I felt thrilled for the first time. I can call this little apartment my own place. I bought a nice warm jacket for Mr. P. I gave it to him, thanked for his help, and told him I'll visit from time to time. I didn't attend to my neighbor's dinner. I don't feel like dating yet. I think I need more therapy and do some more healing. At my new home, I reflected about my goals meeting Jane. I concluded I need closure, understand her actions, make her understand there is no possible reconciliation, and end up things amicably. I'll divorce her and move on. But I don't want to lose my in-laws, my sweet and incoherent meal, my stubborn and strong Syl and her twins who I love. I don't want to miss their birthdays and future achievements. I want to be at least cordial to Jane. At job, my boss gave me five days off starting the next week. I didn't want to stay in, so I went to the beach. It really helped me to be away from everything and rest. I realized I do love my wife, but the chubby one, the one who got excited when Pizza Fridays arrived, the one who I married 11 years ago, the one who supported my dreams and hopes, the one who hugged me when life got rough. I don't know what happened to her. Did vanity kill her? Horniness? No idea, but I loved my wife deeply, and the one who betrayed me is not my wife.
Update 4. Finally, I saw my godchildren. Still took them to a park and I met them there. We four had a great day. Last weekend, I met Jane. It was pretty much as I expected, pleading and lost of crying on both sides. Surprisingly, she didn't blame me. She admitted it was all on her. When she snooped my phone, she saw I moved from the condo, my Reddit posts, so she knows everything I know, and more important to her that I'm not dating. Before the meeting, I had another session with my therapist and discussed my anxiety attack and the talk I'll have with Jane. She told me the best way to move on is following the next steps. One, hit rock bottom. Two, identify and take control of your emotions. Three, focus on self-improvement. Four, take a break, literally. Five, be constructive. Most of you champions told me to keep in check my emotions. I am sure I'll get angry, sad, anxious. I mustn't let it cloud my words and judgment. Also, I'm prone to have another anxiety episode. My therapist mentioned some techniques of breathing that really helped me. Let's move to last Saturday. I asked Mr. P to check if she's alone. She came on time, alone and stunning. New short dress, high heels, that she hates, but she knows I like her wearing them. I won't lie, my heart skipped a beat. She smiled at me when I opened the door like she was so happy to see me. I remained calm and expressless. She opened her arms, expecting a hug, but I made her a sign inviting her to come in. I offered tea, she loves chamomile tea, she accepted and I made myself a coffee. We sat in front of each other, the table in the middle. I took out my phone and started recording. I tried to write word by word and using boxing references, but it's too long and crude I gave up. I'll give you a summary. After some dumb chit chat, she made me feel awkward again. She told me she's read my post and the waterwork began. She said the Jane who made me suffer is gone now. She says that the thing called a fair fog is real and she can't believe what she did to me. I told her, then you know I think your letter has been sugar-coated. She said all she wrote is true, but I mentioned I think it is BS that Flirty brainwashed her. She's ten times smarter than that 403. I demand her to tell me the trut. She went silent and I raised my voice. No, Jane, you are not allowed to be silent again. I had to breathe because I was getting angry. You have to come clean to me right now. I know more than what you wrote in your letter. Sadly, she admitted she wanted to F Baldy. She admitted she loved the attention she was receiving. And when she saw Baldy devouring her with his eyes, she felt thrilled and aroused. She confessed it began before the elliptical machines incident. A but a week before when I was changing clothes in the showers and she was waiting for me outside, Baldy chatted with her and he was flirty and she couldn't believe he'd come on to her. She cried when she told me this. I asked, is that what it takes for you to throw your morals and ethics away? A strong body and a bird brain? From that moment, I refer to Baldy as bird brain. She said she was really stupid and selfish and that she gave me for granted, but she assures me that this was only physical, never emotional. She swears she never said to him, I love you, and I'm the only owner of her heart and her body. I breathed and regained some composure. I told her it's been about three months since we had sex, and last time I could tell you weren't into it. I bet you were longing for bird brain. She says that's not true because according to her, she can't bear a life without me. I said, I don't believe you. You had a good income. You could easily sustain a decent life with bird brain. She repeated she doesn't love him and he was just a toy. I called BS one more time and reminded her when I saw them in the mall. I'm going to copy this part. OP, I saw you at the mall with him. Hugging, kissing like when we were engaged. She was fidgeting. I'm so sorry. OP, tell me the truth. You do love him. She shook her head. I liked how people stared at us. But I don't love him. OP, seems like you were the perfect couple which would never happened with us, right? You loved the attention which you would never have with a person like me. J, please don't say that. OP, why not? It's true. It is. I don't perceive myself as an attractive man. I'm the kind of guy anybody wouldn't look twice. J, no, you are the man of my dreams. I only want to be with you. OP, if you love me so much, then why cheating? What did he give you I didn't? She couldn't answer the question. I repeated it, and she covered her face with her hands, and finally admitted she considered Bird Brain's body more attractive than mine. Another jab. It was something I expected, but damn, it hurt. Jay, I swear I had a moment of weakness, and I hate myself for that. OP, one moment? I yelled again. That moment lasted nine months, crying again. It went out of control. OP, nine months. Nine fucking months of disrespect and lies. Tell me, how could I trust you ever again? Was Bird Brain the only one? What will happen when the next douchebag steps in front of you? You were very good at lying and hiding your cheating. Now she looked desperate. I'm telling you the truth. I know you have no reason to believe me, but I've reflected. I've seen my life without you and I'm so sorry. I'm sorry I cheat on you. I'm sorry I lied. I'm sorry your family hate me. 
but most of all, I am so ashamed I hurt you. I beg for your forgiveness. I'm here to come clean and fix things so we could be together again. A lot of tears fell from her face. Before D-Day, I'd given arm to ease those tears. Today, I only felt anger Oh, put. I think you are not getting it. I can no longer trust you. I can't be your husband anymore. There's no way I can forget you in that room with him. You texted him the very same day I told you I was going to my parents and you were ready to get rid of me. My God, Jane. Half an hour after I left, he was inside you and raw. And you even let him finish inside. Why? By this moment, I was crying too, and I forced her to answer. She looked defeated. She said it made Birdbrain more excited and she liked it, and since she can't get pregnant, she thought it didn't matter. I swallowed saliva because I felt a huge knot in my throat. With trembling voice, I asked, What else? I was fishing for more information I didn't expect to hear what was coming. Jane couldn't see me in the eyes. She looked down and said, He made me beg him to finish inside. This was an uppercut to me. I couldn't speak for several minutes. This is when I hit rock bottom. We both cried, and Jane only said, Forgive me, forgive me. She tried to grab my hand, but I removed it. Then she told me the first time Birdbrain finched inside was the first time she denied intimacy to me. She felt dirty and didn't want me to be tainted. I felt disgusted. I almost throwed up. She swears that's when Birdbrain became more demanding and threatened to come and tell me everything because he thinks Jane belongs to him. I couldn't utter a word. I could still feel the knot in my throat. I wiped my tears with my sleeve. I used our signs language to tell her that her makeup was running. She went to the bathroom and I could catch my breath to calm down a little. While she was away, I could confirm there's no way I'd take her back. I'm so disgusted, I feel like I was gutted out. But also I knew I needed to know this. I needed to know how deep the rabbit hole goes. I don't want to carry this anger and confusion anymore. When she came back from the bathroom, I told her I can't go on. I need space and time. She said she understood. Before she left, she asked me if I will ever forgive her. I told her I don't know, but I appreciate her honesty. She hugged me. I didn't return the hug. She cried and I could feel her tears wetting my neck. She swore in the name of my late father-in-law, who was her hero, she will never cheat on me ever again, that she has gone NC with Birdbrain, she called him Birdbrain herself, and to devote her life to us, to our marriage. She even proposed to gain weight again so I'd be sure she's committed to me. I told her she's saying nonsenses. We both made a big effort to lose weight. But she says therapy made her realize she's a narcissist and an attention junkie. I gave her a key copy of the condo to get all her stuff. She finally left. I thought I'd cry a lot, but strangely I had a feeling of relief. It feels like my mind is telling me, now you can move on. I lay down and reflected a lot. I even skipped a meal. In my mind, I finally accepted the love of my life is gone. I guess I got my closure. Update 5. Hi again, champions. Thank you all for your DMs and comments asking for an update. Sorry to tell you depression has kicked in. Let me walk you through. Several things have happened in the last months. But today, February 17th, my divorce is complete. I am a single man again. First, let's go back to October 2022. At last, I had a good peak of my life as single man. I've been going to my parents' house to learn to cook. I like cooking a lot. Last weekend, I made bread myself. It was kind of ugly, but delicious. I'll practice a lot to bake a cake for my godchildren for their B-Day next March. Also, I noticed I'm very intolerant towards cheating topics. Have you seen the sitcom The Office? It used to crack me up. But now that I saw the cheating and gaslighting, it stopped being funny to me, even if they try to hide it as romance. I can't tolerate it. I bet none of the writers have been cheated on. I spoke to my attorney. He mentioned Birdbrain Sue proceeded, and that reminded me I wanted to have a chat with Frank. Long story short, I met Frank, and he told me Birdbrain was fired the same Monday I met him. And yes, he was living illegally at Frank's father's house. Since Birdbrain was his employee for years, Frank made a civic sue for trespassing, meaning he can't be near Frank or any of his properties for the next five years. If he does, the cops will be involved. I asked if Jane would be sued too, but he said Birdbrain confessed she was unaware of all the situation and that she just went to the house to exercise with his guidance. They used the repaired equipment to exercise. Besides, Frank assumed Jane and I were still together, and he felt he owed me that. Frank is very cordial and friendly. He was cheated on in his youth, so he has zero tolerance on the topic. He gave me something. He said, you're gonna love this. He showed me his phone. It was a soundless video from one of his CCTV cameras. It took me a minute to recognize it was showing the gym's cafeteria. All tables are empty, but one. There is a man sitting with his back to the camera, then a huge muscular back appears, and I recognize Harry walking towards the man. I ask, is that? Frank nods, and I continue watching. Harry puts his hand on Birdbrain's shoulder, then Birdbrain covers his face with his hands. I can tell they are chatting, 
and finally both men walk towards the camera, and Birdbrain's face can be seen clearly for a few seconds. Sad expression, red eyes, and tears on his cheeks. The video ends when they are out of the screen. We both laughed. I said I'm going to put this video as my screensaver. It was taken the day before Birdbrain was fired. I've gone to my first session with the psychiatrist. He said I have signs of depression due to my anxiety combined with my insecurities, so he prescribed a soft antidepressant pill daily until next session. At the time, I didn't feel any different. Also, I started taking kickboxing lessons. My coach told me I have good reflexes, but I have a long way to go. Jane took all her stuff from the condo. She also took our marriage big picture. My brother's friend gave me a good idea. I'll sacrifice the living room to make another bedroom and make the dining room and kitchen a common area. So, it will have three bedrooms. I hired a guy to take care of it. My attorney informed me Jane has her own attorney and he requested a meeting. I asked what I have to do and he told me to play along. He'll do all the talking, I just have to agree. Unless my lawyer thinks they make an unreasonable request, he'll ask for a time out to discuss it. The following week, the meeting took place at Jane's attorney's office. Jane was stunning and very quiet. She was trying to steal glances from me. After the proper introductions, her attorney, M50-ish, mentioned since I've already refused to pay alimony, the issue concerning to her client won't be mentioned. Jane's adultery. My attorney said that's fine if it is listed for the record which her attorney reluctantly agreed. Then they proceed to split our assets, which was pretty fast because I don't want anything, and Jane said she has taken everything she treasures. Besides, we didn't have expensive stuff. Finally, her attorney asked for five sessions of marriage counseling and added, if I agree and attend with an open mind and honesty, his client guarantees a smooth divorce. My attorney reduced them to three and NC between sessions. I made a worry face to my attorney and he kicked my foot under the table, meaning to play along. I saw Jane and she was making a face I've seen when she really, really wants me to do something. So I made my face of, okay, you win. And she smiled. Marriage language again. Later, I asked my attorney if MC is necessary. He said it is. Because the judge who will be assigned to our case may agree with Jane since she's making the attempt of reconcile while I'm not. Or the judge may agree with me and ignore it. So attending to MC is a necessary risk. I said she was the one who cheated. He told me I've already asked for a compensation and the judge will overlook her adultery. The judge has the power to divorce us right there or he she may order more counseling and or a period for reconciliation. It's like flipping a coin. Moving on to mid-October, we attended to the first session. We sat on big sofas, one in front of the other, and in the middle, the counselor, let's call her Dolores. After hearing all the background and the main point of our divorce, she asked both of us what we expect. I said I just want to be amicable but still want to divorce, and Jane said she wants to reconcile. She asked for Jane's opinion about my goal, and she said she doesn't want to divorce. She has never stopped loving me. I was about to argue, but the counselor asked me to not interrupt. Then she asked me about Jane's goal. I said, I don't think we can reconcile because I don't trust her anymore and I think she's in love with AP. This time Jane wanted to say something, but the counselor asked Jane to not interrupt. Then asked me why I think that. I mentioned the gaslighting, how she was giggling the day before D-Day and how eager she was to get rid of me on D-Day. It was Jane's turn to talk. She swears she does not love Birdbrain. She has never told him I love you because she doesn't. She barely spoke to him during the day even though he was constantly sending messages to her. She assures me she doesn't know important stuff like his B-Day, but she confessed she liked the thrill, the secrecy, the staring from other people. She wanted to show me from her phone she wasn't talking to Birdbrain that night. I said her phone is useless because she used to delete conversations. Dolores mentioned there are apps that can recover deleted messages. I said, oh yeah? But Jane was silent and I could see she was thinking very fast. Dolores and I stared at her and she was making nervous movements. I said, will you give me your pwn? Jane looked like she wanted to argue, but kept silent. I said, you are still in contact with him, aren't you? Jane almost screamed, no, I swear, but... She was hesitant about giving me her pwn, and finally she gave it to me and said, please remember the Jane who texted is not me anymore. I said, what does that mean? I beg you, don't make me say it. I was in the fog. I asked Dolores about this affair fog. She told me from her experience, it looks like the judgment A is clouded by the excitement and focus on a new relationship, so the subject's mind can't comprehend or just ignores the consequences of their actions. It varies a lot from person to person. Jane told me, OP, I'm deeply sorry for all I texted to him. Now, I can't understand why I was so disrespectful to you. At that moment, I wasn't sure I'd want to know what she meet. If she trashed me like Birdbrain did, it would be a massive blow to me. I confided her everything about me. Next, Dolores asked me what it takes for me to reconcile. I told her there are two mayor obstacles I don't see how to overcome. No. One, she lied for a long time and I can't trust her anymore. No, two, 
I can't be intimate with her ever again since she gave her body to another man. This made Jane tear. She says it was purely physical, like using a dildo. Besides, she swears bird brain wasn't very impressive at all. I reminded her my reason number one. She insisted, almost desperate, OP, I have never made love to him. You are the only one. I just felt angry and yelled back, and that's why you didn't touch me for the last months? Dolores asked Jane her reasoning to cheat on me. She spoke about she being the chubby girl, bullied and ignored. She was very lonely when she was a teenager. At university, she was friend with some girls, but they tend to leave her behind. If it weren't for her great grades, they would have completely ignored her. Then we met, and it was like finding a twin soul. When she lost weight, all her fat went to very strategic places that made her look voluptuous. At first, it was scary when men stared at her, but when Flirty and her friends told her she's hot and beautiful and that she must be confident of herself, that's when she started enjoying the attention and her ego went to the clouds when she saw a bird brain staring at her too. She told me, you don't know how it feels to be ugly. I told her I do. I lost count of reactions and friend zoning. At job, female colleagues made a list of handsome male colleagues and I didn't figure it in it. I am still unattractive and I didn't care because I had a person who loved me. But that person traded me for a better looking guy. That sentence made her tear again. I belong to an ethnicity very bullied in my country, associated to poverty and ugliness. I had very hurtful nicknames and according to my therapist, that's what made me gain weight, like an armor to protect my wounded ego. Dolores asked me if I can see she's remorseful. I said I can tell she is, but just because she's been caught, not for her cheating. Jane said she knows she screwed up. That's why she confessed to all people we both know. Dolores was specially interested in this confession and asked Jane why she confessed to people unaware of our marital problems. She said she knew she deserved a punishment. It wasn't enough my anger and cold shoulder. Many people called her and berathed her. She listened to every word, every insult, and every swearing. Sill can confirm she did. She has lost friendships, and mostly my relatives have disowned her but she gladly took that bitter step if it would help to reconcile with me. I was out of words. Dolores told me most unfaithful people tend to hide their cheating as a negation mechanism, but Jane didn't. She owned her mistake. That's something I should give her credit for. I asked what would have happened if I still were unaware, if today I were still clueless. She said Birdbrain was getting very aggressive and he was demanding either he or she tells me about the affair. He used to scared her saying something would happen to me and she was afraid what he would do. I scoffed. In her own words, I think you finding out was the best thing that could happen. It made me react and realize how screwed up I was. I told her I know Birdbrain is in love with her, and she already knew. That's why he hates me and used to trash me, and he was demanding to disrespect me in my own house. He knew if I was in the picture, Jane will never be his. Dolores asked me, what does your wife win asking for this marriage counseling? If she's so in love with Birdbrain, wouldn't she be eager to divorce you sooner? Why is she making all this effort? I must remind you she has already lost her acquaintance's respect. I couldn't answer. I know I'm not her meal ticket. She had a very decent job and she can get another one easily. She's not homeless nor disowned from her sister. Then I said, for the sake of the argument, let's say we reconcile and we live together again. What would happen then? I doubt everything she tells me. Every time I'm not looking, I'd suspect. It'd be torture for me. Jane said, I know it would be difficult, but I'd never give you reasons to doubt me. I responded. You wouldn't for now, but what about in two years when the dust settles? When I have signs of trusting you again and another douchebag catch your eye or stares at you? Jane kneeled in front of me, looking me in the eyes. I'd never hurt you ever again. The two most devastating experiences I recently had were when I received the divorcing papers and thinking you may have been badly injured when they called me from the hospital. If you give me another chance, I'll always remember this two times I thought I lost you and devote my life to make us happy. I was out of words again, so I just scoffed again by the time the session was over. At home, I checked Jane's phone. I noticed bird brain is still blocked. I unblocked him and a lot of messages came. Babe, are you okay? Babe, call me. Babe, I'll go to your house to check on you unless you call me first. Babe, where are you? I bought an app to recover deleted messages. I was very nervous. I got most of the earlier messages back. The older ones were difficult, so I got a few of them. I was expecting she being disrespectful to me, but she tries not to mention me. I found some sexting conversations, but knowing Jane, she didn't enjoy it. Birdbrain uses rude words a lot, and Jane hates that. He called her babe and some other ridiculous pet names I didn't even dare to use when we were in the honeymoon phase. Lots of I love yous from him, but I didn't find a single one from Jane. I felt some relief and then punched myself because I shouldn't feel that. Also, as Jane said, Birdbrain used to mock me. He called me fatty, pathetic loser and little girl. 
Whenever he mentions me, Jane just said, I don't want to talk about my husband. In the most recent messages, I can tell whenever she didn't play along. Burbrain got angry, and he told her he was on his way to my job to tell me everything while she begged not to. Obviously, it was just a bluff he doesn't know where I work. I looked for the messages at D-Day-1, and she didn't text him. No call records, either. I snooped some more and saw she was messaging to a chat group with Flirty and two other girls that night. They are hilarious. Some of their comments made me chuckle. At D-Day, plus one, Jane was kicked out of the group. The next MC session, it was related to our past. Dolores asked how we met. It was at the university. We both were in the library doing homework. I had the last copy of a certain book. Jane asked me for it because she had to go home early, but I also had to go to my job, so we bought needed it, and I told her we can photocopy it. We were in different careers, but we had the same teacher, so the assignment was the same. We chat while we were in the line. We hit it on, and I noticed how beautiful, intelligent, and kind she is. She just thought I was a good person. I lend her the book, and I got the photocopies. That way she had to return the book to me, and we would chat again. I arrived late at work, but I felt it was totally worth we were friendly until I invited her out, but she turned me down. From there, I just greeted her in the hallways like a friend, but I didn't make a move on her. Suddenly, a week later, she invited me out. I babbled a yes, and we started dating. Next, Dolores asked, what made us fell in love with each other? In my case, it was when I took Jane to eat Japanese food for the first time. She was clumsily trying to eat using the chopsticks until she had enough and said, fuck this, and she pierced the meat and ate that way. I'd never heard her cursing before, so it made me laugh, and I said, I love you for the first time. Jane took longer, but she says it was in a trip we both took. She knew it was going to be our first time being intimate, but she had cold feet because she thought it would disappoint her father. Also, she was scared. She thought I would get mad and didn't tell me. At night, she started crying and apologized to me. I told her I'm not mad, and if she didn't feel ready, I understand. I want her to trust me and feel comfortable with me. We cuddle and slept. She realized she felt secure with me, and that was the first time she told me the L word. That session, I didn't got angry nor yelled, and I had a nice time remembering good old times. I gave Jane her phone back. I told her I believe her she's not in love with Birdbrain. She took her phone, smiled at me, and left without a word. She really is respecting my NC request. The following Sunday, one of my cousins, let's call her Karen, threw a Halloween party at a bar, and she invited me. No disguises were required, so I groomed and attended to the party alone. Karen was one of the many people who received Jane's confession. She wrote her that she'll introduce me a very hot date. So she introduced me to a friend of hers, a woman in her late 20s, very attractive. Let's call her Princess. I greeted her and then I saw it. She made a face I've seen several times, like if I had a giant booger dripping from my nose, a face of disgust and disappointment. I usually don't care about it because I had my beautiful wife. At that time, I was eager to know how much I've improved myself. Seems none since 18 years ago when I met Jane. She never gave me that look. She always looked happy to see me. That's why I fell fast and hard for her. Immediately, my defense mechanism acted, and I wanted to keep my distance from Princess. But Karen sat us on a booth, and I tried very clumsily to chat. But she barely responded. She took her phone out and texted while I tried to maintain conversation. Another guy came and told her, Here you are. I didn't know you were coming. Want to dance? She looked at me and said, You don't mind, right? I said, Go and have fun. I saw them getting lost in the crowd while I kept thinking, so he didn't know she was here, but still he was looking for her. I bet she texted him, come and save me from this creep. I looked for Karen. It took me some minutes to find her. She was talking to Princess. Before they noticed me, I clearly heard her saying, you said he's a catch. He is, and Karen saw me. They immediately got quiet. I said, I'm not feeling well and I'm going home. I told Princess, sorry for not meeting your expectations. She shrugged. Karen had daggers in her eyes. When I got home, I thought she just was some materialistic witch, but she moved some dark old feelings from my youth. I couldn't stop them coming for me. I'll be alone from now on. Childless, wifeless. I'm a very unattractive man. It will be very hard for me to build another relationship. I'm almost 45 and alone, a total loser. I had another anxiety attack. My therapist told me what to do. I got under my sheets covered from head to toes. I was crying, trembling, and sobbing. I don't know for how long until I woke up very early in the morning. My pillow was wet because of my tears and sweat. My head hurt, and I sat on my bed staring at the floor for almost an hour, lost in my dark thoughts until my alarm rang. It was time to get up, but I didn't. I felt out of energy. I didn't go to the gym. I sat on the shower floor to sob, and I went to work. One of my close colleagues, same guy who lent me his car, noticed I was very quiet and slow. He told me I look sad, and I finally understood depression has kicked in. 
The following day, I received some texts from Karen apologizing for her friend. I ignored it and tried to go to the gym, but I felt like my energy was cut in half or less. I was tired very quickly. I didn't complete my session and went home. The following Tuesday, I took my godchildren trick-or-treating with CIL. In Mexico, we do this on November 1st and 2nd. I cheered a bit, but when I got home, I felt down again. The third and final session was three days after Karen's party. I arrived and tried to make a good face, but I failed. It took some minutes to Jane to notice I was not the same. She asked me if I was okay. I faked a smile and said I'm fine, but she stared at me and I couldn't see her in the eyes, and she asked Dolores if we can reschedule because OP is not well. I insisted I'm fine, but Jane said, that's a lie, I can tell you're not fine. Dolores asked me what I am feeling. I didn't want to look weak in front of Jane, but then she said, he's sad. I looked at her surprised she sat next to me and asked, what's wrong? She grabbed my hand and this time I didn't reject it her. I just saw her big, beautiful brown eyes scanning my soul. I'm ashamed to admit I started to sob. I put my elbows on my knees and teared a bit. Jane caressed my back and I regained some composure. My nose was running and my eyes were red. I went to the restroom and wet my face. When I returned and sat next to Jane, I saw she had tears on her face, and Dolores asked me the reason of my sadness. Jane said with trembling voice, it was her fault. I agreed to be honest, and told her it's not because of her. My insecurities are giving me a rough time. Jane stopped crying and grabbed my face with both of her hands and placed it in front of hers, nose to nose. She said, OP, I really hate when you say you are unattractive. Yeah, I've whined to her about this in the past, especially when I felt I was losing her. Then she started numering the things she likes about me. She also added, When I undressed you at the hospital and you wear only in your underwear, the nurses and I thought, hubba hubba, that's the best translation I could find. That made me chuckle, and I did feel better. I can see you are in better shape than I remember. I did lose another 4 kg when all this drama started, but also I lost some muscle due to lack of sleep and appetite. I glanced at Dolores. She was silent the whole time staring at us. She said, You both still can work on a new marriage. Your previous marriage is done, but a new concept could work for both of you. That is my advice if you want to take it. Jane loved the idea. I said I'm not sure about that, and I'll discuss it with my lawyer and my therapist. The rest of the session we talked about our life so far individually. I didn't know Jane got another job in a different company, doing the same thing she did in the previous one, and she's still on therapy. I mentioned I'm learning to cook and trying to focus on my mental health. She asked us the good points and bad points of being separated. I mentioned I am busier and it helps me to go on. I didn't mention sometime I miss my wife, but Jane did. She said she hates being alone and not in her house with her husband, who she loves dearly, and she pressed my hand. I hadn't noticed we were sitting next to each other, and she was still holding my hand. I'm sorry to admit, in that moment of darkness, her warm touch felt like a pure ray of light. The session was over. Dolores signed the documents given by our attorneys. We walked together and I took her to her car, still unsure about my feelings to her. She asked me if the NC request was over. I told her, I guess. Then she asked me if we can have a date for my birthday, mids of November. When she saw my face of worrying, she hurried to say it was only a dinner. She just wanted us to chat like the good old times. I agreed, but asked for no kisses and no excessive touching. We agreed to meet two weeks later, one day before my B-day. Meanwhile, I asked for NC again. Update 6. Hi, champions. I'm back with the final update. I appreciate everyone in here. It is because of you that today I have high hopes in my future. Thanks to all of you anonymous strangers who dedicate time for all the hurt souls and lead them to heal. This kind of club sucks, but in the shared pain, we find truly kind individuals who give us a hand just because they've met the same pain. Thank you very much. After meeting Jane and scheduled a date for our date, I was very confused about my feelings. I had to read my own testimony to remind myself what she did to me, but it was like a different person wrote it. I myself was thinking her cheating was not so bad, also she's remorseful. I saw again her video with bird brain. I wanted to get angry, but I just felt empty. I turned to some of you guys to give me advice through DMs and learned that also exists something called the reconciliation fog. This makes us do the pick me dance to forgive cheaters and excuse their actions, my case. I was deep into this fog due to my depression and low self-esteem. Fortunately, I had two weeks before my date with Jane. First, I had a meeting with my attorney. He said it was a bad idea that I should only meet with both attorneys present. I told him it was important to me. It was going to be my litmus test. He said, what if she's recording you and presents it as evidence of reconciliation? I told him I'm still not sure what I wanted to do. That's why I need to see what happens. He shrugged and said, you won't be the first one having cold feet, 
but if you still want a divorce, you need to evade any reconciliation topic and no signs of affection. I told him I understood. In the first week, I had an appointment with my therapist and my psychiatrist. My therapist suggested adopting a pet. It can help me to relieve my depression. I loved the idea because animals tend to like me for some reason. So, I went to a shelter and adopted a dog. She's so joyful and intelligent. Her name is Samantha. She's a mixed breed, medium size. I went nuts buying things for her. Toys, a leash, a collar with her name, a nice warm bed. She did help me to cheer up. My godchildren love her. My psychiatrist doubled my dose of antidepressants and prescribed a drug to ease compulsive thoughts. My parents, psychiatrist, and therapist gave me the same advice. In short words, do what will make you happy. But I didn't know what would make me happy at the end. I needed something or someone that would smack me back to reality. It came from the last person I'd think about. I didn't attend to my last three kickboxing classes since Karen's Halloween party. My coach, Abraham M. Forty-ish, was pissed at me. He met me at the showers to scold me when saw I was down and asked, is everything all right? I said, not really. I started telling him about my depression. He has a son currently dealing with the same and told me to meet him for some beers. So after class, we went to a bar close to the gym and I told him all about Jane and Birdbrain. He was absolutely disgusted and told me basically everything you all champions have. I spoke about my feelings and he shut me down and said, speak up your mind. I was unsure what to say and he repeated, what is on your mind? I don't care about feelings. Tell me what you want. I opened my mouth like a fish out of the water but didn't answer. He seemed exasperated about me and added, you really, really need to man up. He told me to come earlier to the gym the following day. He paid for the drinks and told me, you're going to be born again. The next day I arrived one hour earlier. Abraham was expecting me. He gave me sparring gear and told me to meet him at the ring. I have never sparred before. I sometimes practiced using a sandbag, but that was it. Abraham told me to punch him. I threw a punch and he almost laughed at me. He said, is this all you've got? I felt I was blushing. There were some other students watching at us and I'm the oldest person there. I tried again and Abraham easily blocked me and pushed me back. I tripped and fell on my butt, he said. Your determination is weak. He helped me to stand up and repeated, man up. I heard somebody chuckling and I felt mad. I took it more seriously and tried again and again and again, but I wasn't able to hit Abraham once. I know he was going easy on me. I was tired and he told me to come the following day to repeat. He added, you're not giving your all. Show yourself what you can do. That comment was glued to my mind all day. The following session, Abraham asked some boy to record the sparring using my phone. Once more, I didn't connect a single hit. Finally, we watched the video while he gave me his opinion. My movements were clumsy, slow, and weak. I could protect myself from some of his blows, but my reactions looked like I was panicking. I felt embarrassed just watching myself. Abraham told me to man up, and I must do whatever it takes to punch him at least once. I admitted to myself I wasn't putting enough effort to kickboxing. I started watching videos online. I decided to add an extra hour to my training. At night, I was watching the sparring video, studying my movements, and thinking what I should do differently. I cleared my study to make space for shadow sparring. I was so obsessed about showing Abraham my determination that I absolutely forgot about my problems and my date with Jane. By the fifth session, I was able to predict some of his movements, but still I was slow. I noticed the people watching were incrementing. Later, somebody told me there was a bet going. By the seventh day, the miracle happened. I saw his fist moving towards my chest and I knew what to do. It was just one second. My body reacted with precision and speed. I punched him on his ribs. I was very glad. But then I saw something black, and the next thing I noticed is my face touching the floor, and Abraham shouting, give him some room. I turned my body up. I saw that everyone was on the ring, and Abraham kneeled next to me and told me not to move. Somebody came with a first aid kit. My nose was bleeding. I was dizzy and asked, what happened? Everybody started talking at the same time. They were excited and joyful. Abraham was apologetic and told me, you did it, man. Sorry. It was a reflex. The kid who usually takes video of us showed me the moment I punched him. Abraham reacted and punched me back on the face, and I passed out for about five seconds. It took me one week to connect a single punch on him. I joined the kids and shouted, hell yeah. I was euphoric. Somebody helped me to stand up while I felt some palms on my back. I was smiling, and Abraham asked, I'll repeat my question. What do you want? I yelled, I want to be stronger. I want to be the best version of myself. What about your wife? I made an angry face. She betrayed me. She doesn't deserve me. He smiled and raised my hand like if I had won the match. We all yelled. I know it was just a punch I finally connected, but Abraham knew I needed this victory more than any therapy, medicament, or advice. 
because since then my confusion, sadness, doubts, all disappeared. Welcome to the last stage of acceptance. The following days I put much more effort into my training, and I took a series of decisions the old me would think more than once or ask for Jane's opinion. I'll change my look, my car, I'll do things I didn't do because of fear, learning to dance, to play a musical instrument. And I'll have my first tattoo. Jane texted me the day before our date. I told her the place and time, and she added, don't be late. I felt so much confident about myself. We met at her favorite restaurant at lunchtime. She was breathtaking as always. I was kind of plain, jacket, t-shirt, jeans, and hikers. I think she felt very confident on herself. I just smirked and started recording with my phone. We were amicable, my emotions on check. I didn't feel any anger nor rage like last time we met. It felt like when you speak to an old friend and everything is purely platonic, at least from my side. She asked about my sadness. I told her I feel so much better now, which surprised her. She asked what triggered my insecurities, and I told her about all princess drama. She was mad as my cousin Karen was. She mentioned she will never be ready to see me with another partner. I told her I'm ending a messy relationship with my crazy wife. I referred to her as a third person in the past. She caught what I meant. A very smart idea from one of you champions. Then she told me she sounds like a slut. You should get away from her. We laughed. God, how I miss these conversations with her. Before Birdbrain, we could chat for hours. Then she told me one of my coworkers contacted her and asked her out. I laughed. I've seen that weasel secretly staring at attractive women or girls. I wouldn't be surprised if he has stared at Jane. She turned him down and he got mad. I asked about Flirty. Do you know what's her problem with me? She says she doesn't know, but her theory is that she dislikes my ethnicity and she can't stand I have better studies and salary than hers. I'm at least two levels above her. Also, Jane discovered Flirty is dating seriously two guys, whatever that means to her. We talked about bird brain. He called Jane from another number to convince her to run away with him. She swore she didn't spoke, she just listened and cut the call eventually. He's gone to another state. I said some nasty things about him. She was amazed how liar he is and completely agreed with me that he's a loser douchebag. She asked about the time he and I met. She read it in my post. I told her that seeing him so apologetic gave me confidence. Also, I was pissed, so it was easy for me to threaten him. She pleaded me to repeat the scene, and I did. I told her exactly as I recall what I said and how I said it. She had her eyes opened wide, and she wet her freaking lips. She told me she had goosebumps. She's never seen me so aggressive before. Also, she repeated she liked me more. Then she got all flirty with me and asked if I want to go stuffing the muffin. Our euphemism for being intimate, again closest translation. This was it, the moment I was waiting for. Jane was bringing her face closer to kiss me. I didn't have the time to think, but I felt it again, the anger and resentment. My body reacted and pulled my face away. I made an angry face and told her in a deep voice that stopped her immediately, no. She apologized profusely. I smiled again and told her that we should leave. It was late and I must walk Sammy. I paid for the meal. She didn't bring her car and asked me to take her to my home, I guess she was sure we were going to spend the night together. I was reluctant, but I wanted to push myself into the situation just to say no again. When we were in front of my apartment, we could hear Samantha whining and scratching the door. Before I entered, Jane got all serious and said, OP, will you ever forgive your wife? I already did. Then why won't you take her back? Because I will never forget what she did, and I can't trust her. She made a sad face, but then asked, What about me? Would you take me instead? I smiled and said, What are you talking about? We're friends. She looked offended. Are you friend zoning me? I guess so, dude, and punched softly her shoulder. I thought she would look even more offended, but instead she, her eyes sparkled and had big smile. You finally touched me. That was a surprise for me. Since D-Day, I haven't voluntarily touched her. She took a step towards me. Can I hug you, please? Sure. She practically jumped on me. It felt so familiar her voluptuous body that strangely fits perfectly between my arms and chest, her perfume and her long wavy hair tickling my nose. I hugged her back and she pleaded, let's get back together. I told her, no, Jane, we are going to divorce. She broke the hug and stared at my face. I guess she thought I was joking, but I wasn't. She didn't take it well. She was sure we were going to reconcile and made a scene in front of my apartment. I tried to calm her down, but she was protesting and yelling. She hugged me tight like if I was about to disappear. She was begging and telling me she has changed. She will make me happy, and she would do anything for me. And the tears started. I felt sad for her. I don't hate Jane. She was my best and only friend for so long, and we both have amazing memories together. But she made a big mistake, and as consequence, I fall out of love. 
I saw a nosy neighbor peeking from his apartment, and I guided Jane inside my house. Sammy was curious about her. I didn't have any tea to offer, so I warmed some soy milk while Jane sobbed and petted Sammy. I sat in front of her. The milk helped her to calm. She asked me, do you still love me? Just as the good friend you have been to me all these years. Not as a partner. Not anymore. She yelled, why not? I've changed, Jane. I feel different now. I finished mourning our marriage. She got mad and said I was being cruel. I said I was being realistic. What I said in MC was my honest truth. I can no longer trust her ever again. And I will never forget her face when I caught her on D-Day. She shattered my trust and destroyed my love for her. She hit the table and called stupid B herself and cursed bird brain. She admitted she didn't know what she had until she lost it. She gave me for granted. Then she made some proposals like granting her a period of reconciliation, opening our marriage on my side, and or to being FWB. I told her she's being unreasonable. She asked me what I want from her. I told her I want her to be happy with whoever she chooses, and I will move on and be happy on my own. She asked if there is another woman in my life. I told her, not yet, but someday. She covered her face with her hands. Sammy was sitting next to her and put her paw on her leg. I realized it was time to walk Sammy, around 10 p.m. Jane came with me. She was very quiet, walking by my side. When we were at the dog park, I took Sammy's leash off and she ran, sniffed and rolled over the dry grass. She loves that. Jane sat next to me and finally spoke. I'll never find love again. Yes, you will. There are a lot of fish in the pond. She told me at her new job, two co-workers have asked her out. Both are married. I asked, have you reported them? She said it's not possible because they asked for a friendly going out, and that's very innocent from HR point of view. I asked if she's sure about those guys' intentions. She said both have their eyes glued to her breasts. So, she's sure. She placed a picture of both of us on display like assholes repellent. I laughed. She didn't laugh. She said she seriously thinks she'll be alone from now on luring scumbags. She can't have children and she lost the love of her life. She asked me if I'll marry again. I told her I don't think so. I may not believe in marriage again. I didn't mention I do want to have children. I sent the audio to my lawyer and days later he told me he didn't find anything showing reconciliation, just useless chit-chat that'd be a waste of time if it's presented as evidence. Besides, it was a smart move to refer Jane as a third person because it sounds like I'm not talking directly to her. On my birthday, most of my extended family texted me and called to know how I was. I went to my parents' house. My brother and his wife were already there. Jane showed up with all my in-laws. We all played, eat, and enjoyed a big tasty cake made by my mom, best cook ever. No drama, Mill was in a good day. She felt confused, but she enjoys watching the twins play, even though she forgets they are her grandchildren. It really was a great day. When we cut the cake, I realized I had everything I wanted. My godchildren are still in my life. I forgave Jane and my depression is almost gone. Several other things have happened since. On mid-December, I dated a single mother who tried to convince me to adopt her annoying child. That's a funny ride. If there is a place where I can post about disastrous dates, I'll tell you about it. One of my tenants wanted me to be her sugar daddy. I got my first tattoo on my shoulder. It's an Aztec Eagle warrior, meaning I'm proud of my heritage and my ethnicity. If somebody have a problem with my appearance, I'll just shrug and continue being me. I'm a decent, hardworking person. Aztec Eagle warriors used to wear a helmet made of the head of a royal eagle. Royal Eagles are a symbol of freedom, honesty, and strength in my country. At the end of December, Jane quit her job because one of the co-workers harassing her was a big shot at the company. HR was gaslighting her, so the smartest move was to quit. I spent Christmas with the twins and her family. She's accepting we're done, but she's annoyingly friendly to me. On January, I made a Tinder profile. One of the kickboxing guys helped me making my profile. Although I had few likes, I contacted a junior high teacher. She's witty and very funny. We started dating. Sadly, I know it's not going to last. She doesn't want children, she's a gamer, and I consider video games a waste of time. Besides, she wants me to stop practicing kickboxing because it is too violent. As you know, my divorce was over on February 17th. Jane texted me, I know this is not the end for us. Days later, Sile told me Jane got in the depression stage. She begged me to talk to her because she does listen to me. She stopped working and she's very skinny. She used to sleep most of the day and refused to attend therapy until I talked to her. She wants me to contact her more frequently, but I told her this is precisely what is causing her depression. She has to let me go. That's it. I feel now I'm on the right path. I'm studying a lot to get the promotion, which will allow me to travel. I'm still doing great at the gym. I haven't sparred with Abraham again, but guys there ask me to help them. Finally, I got what I wanted. 
to be amicable with my ex, and I didn't lose my in-laws that I still consider them as my family. My godchildren love me, and I love them as my own children. I couldn't stand the thought of losing them. Because of them, I went through the rabbit hole. I went through the stages of mourning, and I got over Jane. In my country, the godparents are responsible for the kids if anything happens to mom and dad. Godparents are the second parents. To all who are mourning a marriage, don't let the bitterness gets the best of you. There's light at the end of the dark tunnel. It takes time and dedication from you. Maybe not today, not tomorrow, but someday you'll get over all of this. I wish you the best, as a real rock star used to say, Bantar out.